Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Once again, God has allowed us to come together, even though it's virtually, he has allowed us to come together and talk about the word of God, just talk about him. And we just thank God in the midst of everything that's going on, God is still good. God is still faithful. God is still consistent. And I do pray that all is well with you or as well as it can be or as well as it is. We'll say it that way. Cause it can always be a lot worse, but we just thank God for things being as well as they are. We just thank God for being on this um, side of the ground instead of the alternative. Amen. And we continue to pray for our sick and our, our shut in, the ones who need comfort while in their period of mourning. We continue to pray for them. Pray for those who are taking care of them because it takes strength and encouragement for them as well. I, I can just, I just feel that God is, is um, with us continuously and and we're just anxious to get back into the house of the Lord and him opening those doors again. And we're going in um, soon. So we're just excited about seeing all of you. And we'll have more information about that later. But there is a word for today. There's a word for today. And we want to get on into that word. But before we get into that word, we ask that you join us in a word of prayer. Um, dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us. Thanking you for waking us up early this morning, starting us on our way, watching over us up and down the dangerous highways and byways, being with us because you are God. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for everything that you are doing, everything that you have done, everything that you're going to do. And we ask that you bless your word today, Father. Bless your word. And I know that it's already blessed, but bless the hearers and the doers of your word. Continue to stay with them. Continue to watch over the sick. Continue to watch over those who are needing comfort. I know that you are a comforter. These and other blessings we ask in thy son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, our word for today is found in the book of Hebrews. We want to come to you from the book of Hebrews in that second chapter. The book of Hebrews in that second chapter. And we'd like to notice starting at that fifth verse. Notice starting at that fifth verse. And it reads, for unto the angels, he hath not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testifies saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor and did it set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection on his feet. For in that he put all in subjection unto him, he left nothing that is not put unto him. But now we see not yet all things put unto him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen. And we'd like to take our premise and our thought from that ninth verse. But we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. How, how we perceive circumstances and, and situations in this life, whether it's good or bad, happy or sad, positive or negative, um, optimistically or negatively, depends on our attitude towards life. It's, it's very important. Our attitude in life is very important. It's a, it's a little thing, but it carries a lot of weight. The way that we see things is very important because it can determine whether your life can be filled with misery or whether it'll be filled with joy. Let me give some examples. You, you may see the glass, the glass half empty. I, I'll see the glass half full. You, you, you may see a burnt steak or a burnt piece of meat. I, I may see that, piece, that steak or that piece of meat well done. 
you, you may see your gas tank half empty or almost empty. I, but I'll see that I have enough to make it to where I'm going. You might look at the weather and you say, oh, all those clouds in the sky. But I'll see the sun peeping through the clouds because the storm is almost gone. Hey, amen. It depends on your attitude and how you look at life. See, Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 2, he said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the way that you see things that can tell the world whether or not you are a mature Christian or whether you're still a babe in Christ. Are y'all with me? The book of Hebrews is believed to have been written between the years of A.D. 68 and A.D. 70. The author is unknown, but many theologians attribute the writings to the Apostle Paul and some attribute it to Barnabas. But because of its eloquence in writing, some even may say that um, that Apollos may have written this. But nevertheless, we have the word of God. Amen. Ain't no need of trying to fuss over who wrote it. We just know that we got it and it's there. Now, this epistle was written to suffering Christians that needed uh, more than a pie in the sky or a, a by and by, sweet by and by message. This author, he admits that times are rough and we need to hear a word from the Lord and we don't need to give up now. And then we look at verse nine and he says, but we see Jesus, <laughs> but we see Jesus. And it's talking about the church. It's talking about Christians, no matter how rough things are, we still see Jesus as bad as it is and as dark as it is. The writer under divine inspiration of the Holy Ghost says there is a bright light to lift us up and to look at. We see Jesus no matter how rough things may get in life. We see Jesus no matter how hard it may it may be to feed our family. We see Jesus, no matter how wicked this world may be, we see Jesus. And I want to submit to you today that when we see Jesus, we can find hope. When we see Jesus, we can find peace. When we see Jesus, we can find love. When we see Jesus, we can find joy. We can find strength to hold on to God's unchanging hands. And oftentimes, so many times we feel or we think that we only see Jesus in the gospels. But I want you to recognize that Jesus was all through the Old Testament in the Bible as well as the New Testament. Because if we go back and we trace back when Jesus was in the Old Testament, some, some will say, well, Jesus wasn't in there. They didn't have his name in there, but they didn't have to have his name. But they alluded to or they referred to Jesus. In Genesis 3, when God was talking, he was talking to Eve when he was pronouncing her punishment. He said that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. In Exodus, he said Moses was talking about that prophet that should come. In Leviticus, he was talking about the peace offering. In Numbers, it was talking about the scepter that shall rise out of Israel. In Joshua, it was talking, he was called the captain of the host. In First and Second, Second Samuel, he was called the rock of my salvation. In Job, he was called the day's man that stand between us. In Psalms, he is my fortress and my refuge. In Proverbs, he is the friend that sticks closer than a dear brother. In Ecclesiastes, he is the creator. In the Song of Solomon, he is the rose of Sharon. In Isaiah, he is the root of Jesse and a sure foundation. In Jeremiah, he is the balm of Gilead and he is a resting place. In Ezekiel, he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. In Daniel, he's a stone cut without hands. In Joel, he is the hope of his people. In Micah, 
He is a ruler in Israel, in Nahum. He is a stronghold in Habakkuk. He is my embracer in Zechariah. He is a wall of fire in Malachi. He is the in Malachi. He is the son of righteousness. If I don't know about you, but we see Jesus all through the Old Testament. He's always been here. When Abraham was out there outside of his tent and he saw three men coming, it was the Lord and three and two angels. The two angels were on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and they began to tell him about Isaac is going to be born. So Jesus appeared even in the Old Testament. We see Jesus all through the Bible in, in many different ways. There are five different ways that we see Jesus in the Bible. The first way, we see him as the promised seed. We got to go back to the Old Testament to see him as the promised seed. The first one is in Genesis 3.15 when he told he told Eve, as I, as I mentioned before, that your seed will bruise the head of the serpent. In other words, he will be the one to destroy the devil. Amen. In Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet that began to prophesy of the coming of Jesus or the promised seed, he began to prophesy some 700 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah 9 tells us that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called the mighty God. He shall be called the prince of peace. He shall be called wonderful and counselor. Amen. In. This is this is the word that he was going to be. Pro he was promised that he would be coming, and then in John three sixteen, it tells us that the promise was fulfilled because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and that's Jesus. That's this promised seed that we see born to take away the sins of the world. Amen. So the first way we see Jesus in the Bible is the promised seed. The second way we see Jesus is the powerful son of God. And we can look at the power that God gave him once he came out of the wilderness Amen. The Holy Spirit had ministered to him. He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He came out of the wilderness with power and we can look at the miracles that he performed with this, with the power that God gave him. Now notice this, we can only name a few. Even the Bible can only name a few in the book of John. It tells us that this book cannot contain everything that he did. So we know that he did a lot more. This is just a snippet or a snapshot of what Jesus done. Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding at Cana. He walked on water. Jesus calmed the raging sea. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus fed the multitude, not just once, but he fed the multitude twice. He said he fed 5,000 men plus women and children one time, and then he went and fed 4,000 men plus women and children another, another time. And the main thing showing his power is that he removed the stains of sin from you and I, no matter what kind of sin you were going through, whether it was lust, jealousy, hatred, lying, stealing, backbiting, judgmentalism, having an arrogant attitude with pride, Jesus removed all of us, all of this because he had sin removing power. He power. He is the powerful son of God. So we see him as the promised seed. We see him as the powerful son of God. The third way we see Jesus as the impoverished or the poor servant. He's impoverished poor. He did not come with a silver spoon born in his mouth. He did not come wrapped up in the finest of linen, but he came found in a manger wrapped up in swaddling, in swaddling clothes. He was expected, but he did not come as you expected. Mm, look at this. He Instead of riding in on a white horse and overthrowing government, he came in teaching about love and, and humility and, and compassion. He came to do the will of him that had sent him. He did not come trying to set up stuff and just tell people this and that. No, he came to fulfill the will of him that sent him. Amen. He didn't look like a king, but he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He didn't sound like a king, but he 
did what he was supposed to do at the time that he did it. So he came as the promised seed. He came as the powerful son of God. He came as the impoverished servant. And fourthly, he came as the spotless, sinless sacrifice of God. Mm, yeah, yeah. We see him as the spotless, sinless sacrifice of God. Hebrews 4 tells us that he was in all points tempted like we are yet without sin, which means that Jesus knows exactly what we're going through. A amen. Some of us saying like Jesus yet don't understand. He didn't have this and he didn't have this because it is not documented. Doesn't mean that Jesus did not have every or go through everything that we went through or we're going through. The Bible says that he was tempted on all points or in all points as we are, which lets us know that Jesus went through some stuff that's not written in the book, but yet he knows our every pain. He knows our every fear. He knows the temptation in which we face. And Jesus said no to all of us, which lets us know that we have the power to say no, but it's tough. It's hard because we are flesh and blood. Amen. But Jesus was sinless and he took on sin on Calvary for you and me. He was sinless. He was he, he was spotless, but he was the only one who could be sacrificed to take away the sins of the world. The Bible says by one man, centered, sin entered into the world and by one man, sin was taken away and that was by the blood of Jesus. And Jesus has the only blood that can be accepted as an atonement for my life and for yours. Amen, he is the promised seed. He is the powerful son of God. He is the impoverished savior. We see Jesus. He is the spotless, sinless sacrifice. And finally, we see him as the risen savior. Amen. The Bible says how he took on that cross, marched up Calvary's hill, put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet, hung him high, stretched him wide, pierced him in the side and, and, and took him down and put him in Joseph of Arimathea's grave. His, it was a borrowed tomb because he he need, knew he wouldn't need it long. And early on that third day morning, he got up out of that grave with all power in his hand. He was a risen savior. He told his disciples that they're going to take me down. But in three days, I'm going to build this temple up again. And God raised him up from the dead on that third day with all power in his hands. And, and he had victory over death and he had victory over the grave. And my, my, my brothers and my sisters, he's still alive today. So no matter what's going on in your life, we see Jesus. No matter what the circumstances are, we see Jesus. Amen. And because he's alive today and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I have a best friend. Because he lives, I can have hope for a brighter day. Because he lives, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And not only, not only not only me, but we all can see Jesus today. My brothers and sisters, some of y'all are saying, well, I can't see him. I can't see him. The main way we see Jesus is when we open up our Bibles and we read in that word, we can see Jesus. John first tells us, John, the first chapter tells us that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And, and it tells us in that 14th verse, and the word became flesh, which means we can see Jesus. When we love one another, we can see Jesus because Jesus says that they will know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. We can see Jesus. We can see Jesus by testifying that one day I was on my way to hell. But because I heard about a man named Jesus, he came and he saved me. We can we can tell we can tell him that we see Jesus when husbands and wives and brothers and sisters live the way that the word tells us to live. We can see Jesus today when peace comes out of confusion in the church or in your home or on the job, we can see Jesus. Amen. And not only today, but we'll be able to see Jesus 
in the future also revelations 1 and 7 tells us behold he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess the bible tells us when the trumpet sounds the dead in christ will rise first and then those who are left will be translated in the twinkling of an eye first john 3 and 2 tells beloved now are the son we are now the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be just like him and we shall see him as he is. When he's going to come in the future, we're going to see him when he comes in the end of tribulation. Revelation 19, 11 through 13 tells us that after the rapture, when God has taken up those who died in him and those who are still alive, Satan will have a time to do his little thing on this earth for a while. But when we see Jesus coming again, Jesus is going to come on his white horse as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and he's going to subdue do that dragon and cast him and death into the lake of fire. And finally, when we see him in the future, we're going to see him climbing on his eternal throne. Revelation 21 and 22 and 23 tells us that it's going to be that great city that he's going to dwell in. That God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost will be in that great city and there'll be no more use for the sun because the S-O-N will be shining so brightly in that city. When we see Jesus, there'll be no more sin. In that city, there'll be no more sickness, no more death, no more crying because when I see Jesus, he's going to wipe away all of my tears no be no more sun there'll be no more few no more moon because the glory of the lord will be shining all around us there'll be no more hunger because we'll feed off of the word all day long there'll be no more fear of being harmed by the enemy because there'll be no more enemy and no more death when we see jesus we'll see him face to face and we'll hear him say well done that good and faithful servant will hear him say, welcome home, sit down and take thy rest. The songwriter said it best when he summed it all up and said, when I see Jesus, amen, which means so be it. It'll be all over. When I see Jesus, all the trials and tribulations that I went through down here will be well worth it because there's a reward waiting for me when I see Jesus. Mm, that's motivation right there when I see Jesus and I'm so glad that I can see him even on this side of the river I can see him I get up early in the morning looking for Jesus I go to bed at night looking for Jesus I look for Jesus all during the day because we need him and whenever the enemy try to put that negativity in your mind and I know how things look but it doesn't matter what it looked like but I see Jesus <laughs> And this is the mindset that we have to have. We have to see Jesus no matter what situation and circumstance we go through. We see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Boy, I wish I had a church up in here. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We thank God for you tuning in this evening with us. And we hope we said something that will, well, it will inspire you, will, motiv will motivate you, that will encourage you. Um, about the Lord, amen, and seeing Jesus. We're going to see Jesus again, amen. If we look carefully enough, if we're in his word, if we're if we're, we're worshiping him and praying with him and spending praying to him and spending time with him like we should, we'll see Jesus, amen. We'll see Jesus. We can see Jesus in each other if we look hard enough, if we love hard enough, we can see Jesus. Looking all around at nature, we can see Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So hold on to the profession of your faith and remain faithful. And but we, we see Jesus. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much for all of your support and your continued support. Thank you for your financial support. The um, trust committee will be back at the house again for tithe and contributions on June the 26th, Saturday, June 26th at 10 a.m. So we ask that you come and join us at that time. Oh, well, just ride through, speak, amen, 
and and we keep getting up we thank god for all that you have done especially during this pandemic uh, we kept thing the business part of church going on because of you you were dedicated and you were focused we thank god for you thank god for the partners that joined with us during this time we we love you we thank you for all that you have done all that you you're going to do later i hope that you don't drop us now um, amen. Or in the future, when we start back and we, we asking or we're seeking God and how we can keep this, this YouTube ministry going on. And we're going to keep trying that in some way. We just thank God for all of it. Continue to pray for our sick and our shadow. Well, if you're, if you're mailing it in, let me give that at a, that address is Miss Baptist Church, post office box 1275, Baxley, Georgia. 31515. That's Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Now, continue to pray for our sick and our shut in. Continue to pray for those needing comfort at this time. Continue to pray for our leadership. Pray for me. Keep me um, in your prayers. Amen. We, we are praying. We are diligently praying that God will allow us to go back in the house soon. And give him praise, honor, glory, mainly the fellowship one with another. Amen. We just thank God for that, that coming. Amen. Um, um, continue to be safe when you go out. Um, um, watch your distance. Keep washing your hands and, and wear your mask when you, you need to. Amen. And we're hoping to see you soon. We're looking forward to seeing you soon so we're gonna we're gonna get away from this now we're gonna we're gonna go for now amen and we're looking forward to seeing you all soon so you all take care take care of yourselves take care of each other amen until until next time until next time god bless you